What's up tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I hope you like this video. This is your review for David Makes Man, season one, episode four. So, this episode was all about Gloria, aka um, <clears throat> David's mama. Honey, it was good. This was a good episode. I liked it. So, let's just jump into it. So, we start this episode off with his mom at work. We know that his mom is a waitress. She works at a diner. We saw in past episodes, her coming home from work, her bringing food, that kind of thing. And, um, you know, we see her. She doing the whole Mel's Diner thing where, you know, all the customers know her. She knows all the customers. She got a little bit of sass-like flow. If y'all if y'all old enough to know Mel's Diner, you know what I'm talking about. She got a little sass with the customers, you know. They know her business. Ask her about the kids. She got the regulars, and she working it. You know what I'm saying? She, she dropping off, picking up, and everybody's cool, and everybody loves her. And then we hear, Glow. Glow. And we realized it was all a dream. You know what I'm saying? And she's really just fascinating. I mean, mm, 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 she ain't fascinating. That ain't right. She's fantasizing <laughs> about what she would probably want her work life to be. But that ain't the reality. She's on break. Her um, boss is telling her she has to get back. She's like, I got five more minutes. He was like, you know, so-and-so called out and so-and-so called out. And I need you on the floor now. She was like, that ain't my fault. Now, as someone who's just complacent doing what they doing, I get it. Like, I got five more break. I got five more minutes left on my break. You better stop playing with me. But as someone who's trying to get a promotion into management like she is, see that wasn't that wasn't your move. Now don't get me wrong. Her boss is an ass, and we're gonna get to that. So I am in no way, shape, or form defending her boss. I'm just saying that probably wasn't your best response to say that ain't my fault. Because it's not your fault. But if you're trying to go in the management booth, that's the kind of stuff they're looking for. Neither here nor there. If you had a real boss, I was really looking for that. But that's another conversation. So, um, what we realized is that this episode takes place the same day that we saw last week when David was doing his project and spent the night over Saren's house, okay? So, this is that day that he's at school, um doing his project and the night before he had stayed at Saren's. So it, it's funny because we're getting to see his mom and see what a, what her day was like while we saw what was going on with David and what his his 24 hours were like the week before. Um, excuse me. So she goes on the floor and we realize that her reality is nowhere close to her fantasy. She sees the same customers, but they don't know her from a hole in the wall. They're being impatient. They're, you know, they're mad because they, that they you know, they, they, the food is late and cold and, you know, because again, she's the only one, she's the only waitress there, remember? And the food keeps coming up. The short, the short line cook is, you know, hitting that bell, ding, ding, ding. Like the food is ready. Hello, Gloria, let's get it. And she's, mo she's, she's moving as fast as she can and, um, this one lady got really nasty with, um, the manager is the same woman who she had been talking to in her fantasy and telling her all about her son, her smart son going to, you know, this up, you know, this, um, you know, this, this elite school and this woman, she was a white woman. She was like, Oh, you know, my nephew goes there and he loves it. It's great. You know, this woman don't know her from a hole in the wall, but she ends up winning her over. We see that. The woman is irritated and frustrated, but she cracks a couple of jokes and gets to laughing. And the manager is really irritated with her. He was like, you need to stop doing so much sass. And she was like, what's wrong at work? Like, she was mad. Now she not. Like, what you tripping about? And it's, I don't know what it is, y'all, but the manager just seemed to have a problem with her. I don't know if the manager just doesn't like the fact that she... I don't know what it was, but he just seemed to have a, a burr a burr on his uh, up his ass all day about her off the break. So she asked him about the manager position that she's trying, you know, she's trying to get. Because in her fantasy, I'm sorry, y'all, I skipped over the whole fantasy. In her fantasy, she actually got the job. He calls her in the office and he tells, he gives her a hard time about it, but then he ends up giving her the job. And, um... But then, like I said, the reality was she that that was all her her mind, and it never happened. So she's asking the guy about the job. We see her, we had seen her flirt with this guy. He looked like he was a truck driver, a big big black guy, you know, looked like he's a truck driver. The way he talks, he said, you know, I, I, I you know, they look like they exchange books. They have a now they have a rapport. He's flirting with her. She's flirting back, and they seem to have a really decent rapport. Um, 
And um, so she ends up going in the back and asks the manager about the management position. And, you know, she was like, have you made a decision about the management position yet? He was like, assistant manager. She was like, okay, but whatever. Like, have you made a decision? He was like, look, I don't want you to hold, you know, keep your hopes up because, you know, that, that job's just not guaranteed. It's a lot of people up for that position. She was like, yeah, I know. I understand that. She said, but, you know, at the same time, I mean, do you know when you're going to make a decision? And he was like, well, no, I'm not sure. He said, she said, and he, he keeps making these little smart comments at her. And she was like, look do you have a problem with how I do my job? Like, what is, let's, let's talk. What's really good? Like, what's the problem? And he starts telling her about, you know, um, that, that she says, is this something I can do? And he starts talking to her about, but she buttoned up her shirt too high. And he starts getting all in close and he starts, you know, touching all on her and everything. And he basically letting her know, look, if you give me a little something, something, I might give you this job. And, you know, she's not with it. She's like, look, you're going to back up off me. And she gets, she starts walking away from him really fast. She ends up tripping on the broom and falling down on the floor. The guy she had been flirting with and the short line cook help her get up. And then the next thing you know, we see her at the um, clinic. Get The doctor's telling her, look, you need to get, um, you know, you need to stay off your feet for a couple of weeks. She was like, that ain't going to happen. I can't afford to do it. The um, doctor tells her, um, I'm going to give you some pain meds. And she's like, no. Mm -mm. And the doctor, you can see the doctor sort of understanding going, okay, fine. She said, well, at least let me wrap these ribs up because your ribs are bruised. And you see the whole left, her whole side is bruised up. So the doctor wraps her up and you see her kind of limping back to the waiting room. And in the waiting room is the truck driver, the guy she had been talking about Stephen King with and everything. And, you know, she said, you didn't have to wait for me. And he said, you know, I wasn't going to, you know, make sure you okay. And then she says, you know, um, um, you know, I could have got home okay. He was like, you know, I know you don't think I'm going to let you ride that bus. You know, I'm going to go ahead and get you home. And then he says, um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to treat you like the queen that you are. And he ends up picking her up and carries her out of the waiting room. Honey, that ain't true either. That was a... Now, that was a... I was mad because I really was hoping that... I said, because it looked like this dude really kind of flirt with her a little bit. But that was a dream too, honey. Next, we see her sitting in the back room. She ain't never even go to the doctor. Come to find out she couldn't leave because remember, she the only waitress there. So she didn't leave. She limping around. She come out the back room. The short cook had uh, made her lunch, made her some... Um, some fries and a burger and everything, and she get to eating it, and then she remembers she needs to call um, David, and that's when she calls David, asking him if he can come home from school and get um, JG. And David was like, "No, nah, remember today's the day I got to meet with the counselor." Y'all remember last week's episode? He was with the counselor in his session, and then he faked like he was sick and had to leave early. Well, now we understand part of why, because Mama needed him to go pick up his brother. And um, she said, well, don't worry about it, you know. And she even has to sneak away to go use the phone for two minutes to call her son, right? She comes back out, and some fat-ass white guy that sat at the damn table and started eating her lunch. Who does that? Who just rolls up and starts eating lunch? Like, who, do who does that? And, um, you know, she said that was my food. He was like, uh-uh, I ordered this. So she said something about her dropping it on the floor by the rat trap. And, of course, all of a sudden now he wasn't hungry no more. I said, just some trifling people in this world. So she comes out. She limping around me. She can barely walk, y'all. She is limping around. And somebody is trying to get her attention. And she was pretty rude with them. And what they were trying to let her know was that her um, underwear was showing. Like, you know, they could see her underwear or whatever. And she was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I apologize. She said, it's been a really rough day. I apologize. She was like, let me comp your dessert. And it was like a family of five. And in my mind, I was thinking, okay, you can't pay for everybody's dessert. You could pay for the one the one who flags you down. You could pay for his dessert, but you ain't going to pay for everybody's dessert. So she goes back around to the counter. And her manager's like, you can't do that. She said, what do you mean? She was like, He was like, you can't pay for... That whole table's dessert. You can't comp it. He said, I'm going to have to take it out. Your no, she said, well, then take it out my check. And I don't know. He must have mumbled something about her not even making that much or something to that effect. And she, um, she, you know, she made a little smart remark or whatever. But mind you, dude, you just tried to, you just not tried to, you just sexually harassed my ass. Made me injure myself. I can't even leave to go to the doctor to get checked out. And then, and, and this what we doing? 
Next thing you know, he said, you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. You're fired. Huh? Fired? She was like, what? She said, look, and, you know, she immediately starts trying to, like, look, it ain't even got to be like that. Like, I was just joking. Like, it's not that serious, whatever, whatever. And he was like, no, seriously, you can work out your shift, but, you know, after that, you got to, like, you're fired. I said, what? I don't know what this dude's deal was, and I, I can't wait to see other reviews to see what other people kind of had to say about this, because this dude just seemed to be on one. Like, I get the whole sexual harassment piece of it, but he seemed to be irritated with her from the word go. So I'm like, what's really good with him? Like, what, what's, this dude is really on one. So, <clears throat> She was standing there, honey, and you could just see it all in her face. You could see it all in her face. And she got to looking around, and she went to grab that knife. She was about to go to jail because she, I think she was about to really hurt that man with that knife. She meant that thing. The short cook, the short line cook grabbed her hand, and he, so he, he hit her with the, he ain't worth it. Don't do it. And so, you know. She finishes out her shift, and he 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 loads her up. I mean, he gives her enough food to last her a couple of days. And you know what I appreciate? I appreciate she didn't do the whole, no, I'm good, I don't need it. No, 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 no. She was like, thank you, I appreciate it. He was like, she said, I do know how to cook. He said, I understand that, but you need, you know, you got to buy groceries to cook them. Here goes some food for a couple of days for you and the boys. He said, and you call me if you need more. I said, I know that's right. And as she's leaving, she sees her manager out there smoking a cigarette. And then she does what only a mother would do. Because, see, I don't have no kids. He could have kissed my entire ass. You understand what I'm saying? But because she has children and she has bigger responsibility and it ain't about her, she begged that man for her job. She begged. She said, forget about the manager job. I'll just keep doing what we're doing. Everything will stay the same. Like, forget I even wanted the management job. And, I mean, she she, she was begging. That man paid her dust, flicked his damn cigarette, and went right on back in the daggone um, cafe. I said, see, that's how people, that's how people end up getting hurt. So we see her coming home. She stops by the pharmacy. Here's the thing. What a lot of people don't understand about sobriety. When you have an addiction and you are susceptible to certain things, something as simple as an aspirin can be a trigger. Now, we know that she has a history with drugs. Not sure what drug it is. But depending on her, like we talked about this with the um, Queen Sugar reviews, depending on what the level of her, I guess, addiction level, I don't know what the correct term is for that. You know, there's some people who were heroin addicts and they might be okay taking her aspirin. There's some people that smelling the aspirin is, is a road to hell. You know what I mean? We talked about alcoholics who can work in bars and never pick up a drink. You know what I mean? So we know that... Um, there are levels to this. Clearly, her level is that she cannot do aspirin. She can't do Advil, Aleve, Tylenol, none of that. Because when the doctor was first, when she was fantasizing about the doctor, I'm sorry, y'all. I lost the little nose things on my glasses, and they just fitting funny. I got to go down to the um, eyeglass place tomorrow. But um, it seems like... She's at the pharmacy, and she went in there to get some icy hot, you know, some little patches or whatever for her back. But, of course, the temptation is there. She done had a rough day. She done lost her job. She don't know where, you know, when, where, or how her next meal is coming from. And, um, it, it that's all those triggers. Again, going back to Queen Sugar, don't, you know, those, those, those are those triggers. So... <sighs> We see her struggling with it, but she makes the right decision. She gets her icy hot. She goes to get in line. The line is kind of long because remember, she's still trying to hurry up and get home um, to meet up with JG because she had also called um, her friend, you know, the other guy that lives in the complex, the, the, the one that's the drag queen. She had called him 
to to help her and and he wasn't able to help her. We'll get back to why he couldn't help it help her. But he was taking care of some other stuff and he wasn't able to get there. So she was like, I got David couldn't come. She's got to get home. And y'all know, you know, she looked like she lived a long way from where she worked. So the line was long, so she jumped out of line and went over to another pharmacy station, a pharmacist station. And she's asking him, can you ring me up? And he sees her with all this icy hot. And he was like, can I get you some leave or something? She was like, nah, this is fine. You know, I'm good. She was like, I got some at home. And I don't know. He must have smelled crackhead on her. I don't know. Because then he was like, well, you know, I got some stuff in the back that's way better than this. And, you know, for a small fee, you know, I can hook you up. And she was like, no, nah, I'm good. But you can see she's thinking about it. Like her subconscious is like, girl, you better get it. And then he was like, okay, well, that's fine. Well, here's my car just in case. I'm like, leave this woman alone. Like, she was already struggling and barely holding on. Like, leave this woman alone. So, um, she gets on the bus to come home. And this was another very interesting scene that I wasn't quite sure why they put that in there. She's on the bus and she sees this little girl with an older guy that's, like, kissing all on her and everything and got his arm all around her and you could tell that little girl is looking every bit of scared and looking like she don't want to be there this is clearly not a wanted advancement of whoever this guy is i don't know if he's her pimp i don't know if it's a human trafficking situation i don't know if you know um she gotta do it for the money like i don't know what it is but it's clearly an uncomfortable situation for the little girl and Gloria catches her eye, and you can see that she wants to say something. She wants to talk to this this guy. She wants to she wants to get this little girl. You know, you can see she just wants to snatch that little girl up and take her with her off the bus. But she doesn't, but she keeps looking at that girl. And I kept waiting for her to say something, but she never did. And I almost was wondering if that little girl and that man was real or if that was her, a flashback of her and maybe a situation she was in as a little girl. Like, I, 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 I'm, I'm not really sure why that was put in there. And maybe we'll maybe they'll explain it to us later, but it just seemed very, just very weird that they threw that in there. And again, I'll be interested to, to hear what other people had to say about that little part. Um, so while all of this is, so now Gloria's finally on her way home, honey. So while all this is going on with Gloria, the guy, um, her her friend, um, is over at, down to. Um, I guess some sort of social service office trying to get, remember Star, the um, the little boy that um, David hooked up with um, a couple of weeks ago and they went back, they rolled back to the um, to the um, um, apartments together and everything. He's trying to get him in Job Corps. He's trying to get him hooked up and get him in Job Corps. And the guy that's processing them was like, look, this idea is good. I mean, it's really good. Like whoever you got to do this for, phenomenal. But I can tell this idea ain't legit. And this program is only for, you know, Miami residents. Like, if he's not a resident, I can't, I can't, in a good conscience, let him sign up for this program, you know. And, um, you know, the uh, I hate keep calling him the drag queen, but y'all know I remember that man's name. But he was like, you know, this is a man that is really, this, this, this young man, you know, he's smart, he's intelligent, and he's just trying to get back on track. Like, you know, he's been sidetracked a little bit, and he's just trying to get back on track, you know. And he was like, well, you know, I can't help you. And he alluded to something about, you know, well, um, come on, brother. You know, you don't want to help us out. And he was like, I'm not like y'all. You know, insinuating I'm not gay like y'all. So then that really pissed him off. He was like, oh, well, now I see what, you know, I see what side of the road you want in this. I see what, what side, uh, you know, that your, your, um, your, your bread is buttered on. Shoot, I'm sorry. What, um, I'm gonna drop my phone now. What side your bread is buttered on, you know what I mean? Oh, so Gloria gets home, and they, you know, he leaves, and, you know, that didn't really go well. Gloria gets home, honey, JG trying to burn down the damn apartment complex. You know how JG wets his pants, his, I mean, pees his bed every night. And, um, David's been covering for him. Well, David didn't come home last night, remember? So, um, in the morning, I guess, I guess JG was trying to figure out what to do about them damn sheets before his mama got home. JG done set the damn sheets on fire, honey. He done set his, he done set the sheets on fire down to the laundry room. I guess he did a Juanita Bonham. No more sheets. 
I don't know. So the neighbor is a yelling and hollering at um at Gloria talking about something. You need to do something about your child. You know, what are you doing? You need to, you know, he trying to burn down the complex. I should do this. I should call this. I should sit da 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 And of course Gloria is embarrassed, tired, everything. Like this is all she needs on this day that she's that she done had, honey. And she takes JG up the steps, and as she's taking JG up the steps, and the, the neighbor is still yelling at her about them daggone, um, about the sheets. And her friend is walking up just at that moment. Her friend, you know, the guy, is walking up, and he ends up calling out the the neighbor. He said, he said, well, you know, you know a little something about about peeing on yourself, right? He said, those the pins that you be trying to hide in the back trash can in the recycle bin, those not recyclable, boo. He said, but I understand. I said, you know what? He ain't read her ass. And um, so, of course, now she was embarrassed and ran off. So, JG is being JG. JG bad as hell. She need JG bad, okay? JG is being JG. She got this bag, this brown paper bag, honey, from the, um, and uh, JG trying to figure out what's in the bag. And, of course, everybody, David comes home. And David sees her just as she's trying to get into the apartment and she could barely walk. And he's like, David, you know, mama was wrong. And as he get ready to walk over to his mama, oh, Kool-Aid Dreadlock Boy come running up on him. Now, what I forgot to say in my review last week was Kool-Aid Dreadlock Boy. Y'all, this is getting long. And I still got a long way to go. Anyway, Kool-Aid Dreadlock Boy had gotten arrested last week. We saw that happen. But now Kool-Aid Dreadlock Boy, he home. And I don't know if this is before or after he got arrested. I can't, I, 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 I want to say it was before he got arrested. Or was it after? Anyway, he rolls up on um, David. He's congratulating him on him getting the drugs back. And, you know, he was like, yeah, you know, they was worried about you, but I, they act like you was trying to avoid me. But I, I knew you weren't trying to avoid me. And David was like, no, nah, I ain't trying to avoid you. You know, I was, I, I had to take care of something at school. I spent the night at my, you know, because at first JG was, I mean, at first David was like, so I got to run my, my schedule by you now? And then he was like, look, I was at my friend's house. We had to work on a project for school. So, basically, Kool-Aid Kool uh, Dreadlock Boy let David know, you now block boy. And David was like, nah, I'm really not. I'm good. Like, you said we were square. If I got the drugs back here, I was square. He was like, that's what I said. But now it was different. Because what happened was, uncle, remember when he met up with the uncle? Uncle wants David running them drugs. That's on, that's on uncle. That ain't got nothing to do with the Kool-Aid boy. So... David, <clears throat> so David realizes now that he about to work for the neighborhood drug, like everything that Sky was trying to get him out of, he done got himself into. So he goes into the apartment and him and his mama get to talking and mama told him what's up. She told him she lost her job, but don't worry about it. You know, um, I'm going to go to the unemployment next, you know, I got a plan. Like we good. Don't worry about it. Even though they not good. Like she been living off of tips and you know, she barely been getting those, but she don't want David to worry. And you know, David's worried. And he like, what's in that, what's in that bag mama? Cause of course David automatically thinks that she done went, got some drugs to get high. And she said, I don't know the way y'all been cutting up around here. You didn't tell me JG was peeing on himself. And he said, I didn't want to worry you. I didn't want to give you something else to worry about or whatever. Come to find out that she had bought some toys and there was toys in the bag. And JG was playing with the toys, even though he was supposed to be on punishment for burning them damn sheets. That's why I say he bad. Because David was telling him he couldn't play with them toys. Playing the father role. Mama said, oh, go ahead. Let him be a kid. Let him be a kid. He just tried to burn down the damn apartment complex. Hell no. Oh, anyway, next thing you know, knock at the door. Neighbor is dressed to the nines, honey. She is on her way to a ball, okay? And you see them reminiscing, going back and forth, and reminiscing on when they used to go to the balls together. He was like, come on and go with me. And, you know, he tries to shame her into it, talk, start talking about how she ain't cute no more, and how she got all these stretch marks, you know, trying to shame her into it. And she was like... You know I got the kids here. He was like, David, good. Like, David, damn near, man. He can watch him. Like, you need, to, you, you need to get out. Like, you, come on, you need to get out this house. And she said, meet me downstairs in five minutes. And we see her go downstairs. I mean, we see them meet. And, honey, she she looks good, okay? She got, she, her face is fully made. Got her little outfit on. And they are outside ready to go into the ball. And, um, Star's there and everything. And he's nervous because it's his first ball. And, um... 
come to find out that they're locked out, that um, the people who they, you know, the people must have found out what they were going to do and they ended up locking them out. And so she was like, don't worry about it. We're going to handle this. And next thing you know, we see them, we see them out there um, giving a speech about, you know, you know, they don't want us here, but we're going to party anyway. And they end up doing this whole song and dance sequence with, with choreography and everything. And I'm into it. Like, it's never even occurring to me, like, how the hell they got a choreographed number? But I'm getting it. I was like, yes, baby, she dreaming. She's still standing there uh, contemplating whether she's going to go, um, go, go or not. And she finally says, look, I ain't going. I got to stay home. I can't, I can't go. And the, the friend, the guy says, come on, girl, you know, I got you. And she was like, oh, like you had me, you know, back in the day. So you know that there's something there. But then she sort of just lets that go and says, look, you know, y'all go ahead and go without me. And um, that's pretty much where it ended. So I don't know, y'all. I love this episode because I love seeing the different backstories. Like, I can't wait for the episode about the drag queen because I know he got a story. And I can't wait to see it. And I'm sure the way I see this series going, I feel like we're going to get that story. I don't know what episode, but I feel like we're going to get it. You know what I'm saying? But I loved it. Um, so y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in the comments. Peace.